Hello, Mama Cells. Today is your lucky day because we will be looking at one of the sweetest treats you can get from Van Cleef and Arpels. It is one of the many quintessential aspects of what makes life stellar. It is one of the few things that add small bursts of joy and richness to living. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the chocolates that they offer at the boutique though they're pretty good. I'm talking about their sweet and lucky talisman, the sweet butterfly necklace and bracelet. In this video, I'll briefly talk about Van Cleef and Arpels's history. Then we'll look at the characteristics of the sweet butterfly, how to care and maintain for your mother of pearl, how to extend the length of your sweet necklace, and my honest one year review. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Kat and I make luxury videos mainly focusing on Chanel and its history. If you love anything luxury with a dash of humor, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and follow me on Instagram for more goofiness. So grab your drinks and your snack and let's get started. To create beautiful and stunning jewelries, a jeweler can take up to weeks, months, and sometimes even years for it to come to fruition. Kind of like a beautiful romance. Van Cleef and Arpels was born out of love between Alfred Van Cleef, the son of a stonecutter, and Estelle Arpels, the daughter of a precious gemstone dealer. Estelle and Alfred got married in 1895. Their union and passion for jewelry making and family resulted in the Maison's first flagship store in Place Vendôme in Paris. For those unfamiliar with the location, Place Vendôme was and still is the epicenter of luxury goods in the city. So it is without a doubt that the Maison chose the location purely for strategy. Since its inception, Van Cleef and Arpels has dressed the elite in fine jewelry and became renowned for its fine craftsmanship, whimsical, and classic designs. Their expertise has extended from the procurement of rare gemstones to gem settings, enameling, watchmaking, and many more. However, for this video, we will be taking a closer look at the history of the sweet Alhambra butterfly necklace and bracelet. The collection was inspired by Jacques Arpels's belief in lucky talismans, the four-leaf clover. He once said, to be lucky, you have to believe in luck and his words continue to reverberate within the Maison's universe. The first iteration of the Alhambra was released in 1968. It was a 20 quatrefoil motif, yellow gold opera length necklace that quickly gained popularity. You can see the style being worn by stylish icons like Princess Grace of Monaco and Elizabeth Taylor. Since then, it grew exponentially to include rings, bracelets, pendant necklaces, and watches. Van Cleef and Arpels also introduced other talismanic symbols such as hearts, butterflies, leaves, and stars. Then in 2007, the jewelry house introduced the Alhambra line in delicately sized versions of the motif and called it Sweet Alhambra. It was said that the Sweet Alhambra line was created with children and teens in mind. This is why the Sweet's collections motif and chains are smaller and daintier. However, it shouldn't stop you from rocking the style, especially if you love daintier and smaller pieces. Spend how you want your money and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Now that we know its brief history, let's look at the characteristics of the Sweet Butterfly Pendant and Bracelet. The Sweet Butterfly Alhambra Pendant Necklace and Bracelet are both made out of mother of pearl, and it is edged in beaded or pearly gold. If you're not feeling the look of the mother of pearl, it is currently available in white gold and turquoise. The motif is 11 millimeters or 0.43 inches by 7 millimeters or 0.28 inches. The sweet necklace's chain length measures about 15.75 inches or 40 centimeters, and the bracelet measures 6.69 or 16.99 centimeters. You also have the option to lengthen or shorten the chains of your necklace or your bracelet. However, if you do decide to lengthen either one, it'll cost you about 180 or you can buy an extender from Amazon or Etsy. If you choose to buy your own extender, all you need to do is hook the clasp into the circular end of the necklace and hook the necklace's clasp up to the end of the extender and voila, you've got a longer necklace. The necklace's clasp is a lobster style clasp because of its pinching mechanism and its resemblance to a lobster's claw. And the chain is designed with the classic cable style. Here is how the sweet butterfly pendant looks on me and this is without the extender. 
As you can see, it sits perfectly on my neck and I love how dainty and sweet it looks. It's not too overwhelming compared to the vintage Alhambra and I found it to be proportionate to my frame. Then here is the sweet butterfly stacked with my small Cartier Love bracelet and Justin Clou. I think the sweet butterfly adds a feminine touch to Cartier's minimalist design. This is how it would look normally and as you can see, the butterfly overlaps with the other pieces. Keep in mind that my Justin Clou and my small love bracelet are the same size and I'll save that story for another time because we are focusing on our sweet, sweet butterfly. I have mentioned that these butterflies are made out of mother of pearl. So what is mother of pearl exactly? Mother of pearl is the iridescent substance or nacre that forms inside the shell of mollusks, like mussels or pearl oysters. Mollusks secrete nacre as a defense mechanism against any irritants or abrasions that enters into the shell. Nacre forms along the surface of the shell, which results in the shiny iridescent that we know and love. It is an organic inorganic compound that is made out of aragonite, which is another form of calcium carbonate, AKA it's pretty strong, resilient, and it's what gives it that iridescent finish. What's beautiful about it is that no two pieces are identical. So when you get mother of pearl pieces from Cleef and our pals, each one is unique and one of a kind, like you are. As you can see, my vintage Alhambra earrings, the iridescent finish is different from each other and my sweet butterflies. As I have mentioned before, mother of pearl is a pretty durable substance because of nacre and it lacks cleavage, meaning it doesn't chip or fracture easily. Yes, it does have a low Mohs ranking at 2.5 to 4.5, meaning it's one of the softest gemstones, but it's still pretty durable and wearable. Keep in mind that it can still dull and yellow with improper care. So what do you need to do to keep your mother of pearl from looking yellow or dull? One. Don't expose it to harsh chemicals. This means don't clean it with a multi-purpose or ultrasonic cleaner. Keep it away from perfume or cosmetics. This precious gemstone is vulnerable to anything alkaline or acidic. So be like, bye to the bye, bye, bye. Two, don't store it in direct sunlight or with any other hard metals that can scratch up the surface. Three, don't store it in plastic containers. Plastic can emit a chemical that will cause the surface of the pearl to deteriorate. And since pearls contain a trace amount of moisture, it can dry out if you store it in an airtight space. Number four, don't wear it under situations where you will sweat a lot due to sweat being slightly acidic. I believe sweat's pH is about 6.3. So how can you maintain the beautiful finish of the mother of pearl? Well, number one, Wear it often. I know this might be an unusual tip, but the more you wear it, the better. The natural oil secreted by your skin will ensure that it keeps its luster. After wearing it, clean it with a soft cloth or microfiber jewelry cleaning cloth. The cloth can either be damp or dry. Store it in its box or in a soft bag made out of silk or cotton. I store it in the box that it came with and sometimes if I am traveling, I store it in its little travel pouch. Now let's discuss my one year review. The sweet butterfly necklace and bracelet are the first pieces I ever got from Van Cleef and Arpels. The reason why I chose the sweet butterfly necklace pendant was due to the fact that it matched my personality a little more. Their classic quatrefoil design and the vintage size was a little bit too much for me to use as an everyday piece. The sweet butterfly checked off all the lists that I was looking for in a necklace, which is not too overwhelming, pretty, and dainty. Plus, it went really well with the top that I was wearing at the time, and the bracelet just matched my bracelet stack when I tried it on. I literally walked out of the boutique wearing it already, and I told my essay, you don't need to wrap it. It's okay, I'll just walk out like this. One thing I do regret though is that I wish I could have chosen a pendant that had a more beautiful iridescent rainbow finish. I didn't know at the time that each mother of pearl was unique. When I bought this beauty, my sales advisor did tell me not to shower with it every day or expose it to harsh chemicals. However, I haven't been extremely careful with either one and I've been wearing it almost every day and I've been exposing it to water often. For instance, I've worn it out when I worked out, showered, and basically everywhere I went. As you can see, the mother of pearl is still beautiful and doesn't look scratched up or damaged. What I don't love about the bracelet is 
that it can be a little hard to put on due to its dainty chain and small clasp. For a collection that was meant for children and teens, the chain is awfully long and I have a fairly small wrist. You can get it shortened, but I was advised that the shorter the chains are, the harder it'll be to put on. Another thing that I don't like is how you're advised not to wear it every day and you need to be careful with water, salt, and all that stuff. For my bracelets and necklaces, I prefer pieces that I can, you know, wear almost every day and not baby so much. I know that they do have a solid gold version, but I prefer the look of the gemstones more. So what I love the most about these beauties is the overall design. I think it's a classic, modern, and elegant kind of style. Kind of like me. Kind of like Oh. Due to how Van Cleef designed it, I think it looks amazing on all ages. I love how it adds a certain femininity on my stack and I'm just in love with it. To me, I think the Sweet Butterfly is worth it because of how much I have used it. If anything, I can always pass this beauty down to my daughter when she becomes a teenager. I also like how it retains its value really well in the resale market. So. My kids can sell it if they'd like. Also a great layering piece if that's your jam, but I like to keep it kind of simple so I wear it by itself. Who knows, it might change. Overall, I think Van Cleef & Repulsa's Sweet Alumbra line is the perfect addition to your collection, especially if you love daintier pieces. I do have a few things I'd like to add to my collection, like the two butterfly pendant or the five vintage motif uh, carnelian in yellow gold. I want to take my journey slow and steady because I want to add pieces where I know I will love and cherish for a long time and will work really well with my wardrobe. Well, that is it, mademoiselles. What did you think of the sweet Alhambra line? Is it sweet enough for you to buy or do you prefer vintage sizes? And again, if you like these kind of videos, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and comment.